just act normal. No one has to know. I know. She's gonna tell everyone. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Encanto questions that got answered. I feel like I missed something important. For this list, we'll be looking at unanswered questions from Disney's Encanto that the filmmakers have elaborated upon in interviews and online. Do you have any Encanto questions that need answers? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Does each room have a bathroom? Where are you coming from in such a hurry? Uh, I'm sorry, I was, What um... is in your hair? Although we see many of the magical rooms that make up Casa Madrigal, a few never appear on screen. The bathroom situation in particular has ignited plenty of speculation. Since most Madrigal bedrooms are gateways to vast wonderlands, it's not unreasonable to assume that each has its own loop. It's bigger than According to co-director Jared Bush, though, that is not the case. The whole family shares one bathroom. Although absent from the film, Bush says that they, quote, used to have scenes in there, describing it as, quote, a crazy fun space. We can only imagine. Sorry, you could. You look great. <laughs> Does the sink automatically turn on when your hands are under the faucet? Does the shower know the preferred water temperature for each family member? When there's a clog, you know what? Never mind. Maybe your gift is being in denial. I'm in Number 9. Can Dolores voluntarily use her gift? But... There is one person in this family who hears everything about everything. Thanks to her gift, Dolores can hear a pin drop, Bruno sneaking around the casita, and Luisa's eye twitching all night. The only one worried about the magic is you. And the rats talking in the walls. Oh, and Luisa. I heard her eye twitching all night. Given her sensitive hearing, some fans have wondered why Dolores apparently didn't pick up on certain things such as Mirabel talking to Bruno and Abuela worrying about the miracle disappearing. When asked if Dolores can use her gift at will, Bush replied that it's, quote, probably not as voluntary as she'd like. Although she can't control what she overhears, Bush mentioned that Dolores' room, which remains unseen in the finished film, definitely, quote, has some soundproofing. So maybe this blocks out some noises? Plus, when you can hear numerous people talking 24-7, we suspect that it's not always easy to differentiate one voice from another. My cousin Dolores can hear this whole corner's a mile away. Number 8. Do Agustin and Felix's families live in the Encanto? Welcome to family Madrigal, the home of the family Madrigal, we're on our way. In the film's toe-tapping opening number, Mirabel introduces us to the family Madrigal. This includes Mirabel's father, Agustin, and Uncle Felix, who both married into the family. Since we all come from somewhere, it only figures that Agustin and Felix had families before joining the Madrigal clan. This got some fans thinking. Do Agustin and Felix's family members live in the Encanto as well? Corazón, remember! Yeah, remember! You have nothing, you have nothing to prove! To prove. Mm -hmm. Of course, Bush responded, although he didn't delve into the extended family tree. For all we know, Agustin and Felix have parents, siblings, and other relatives who live nearby. You are make out your papa proud! I don't sound like that. I don't sound like that. We can see why Mirabel limited her song to family members who live in the casita. If she discussed every relative, the song might have been longer than the film's runtime. Welcome to the family, Madriga. There's so many stairs in the casa, Madriga. Number seven. Can someone leave and return to the Encanto? I don't <laughs> understand why you left but didn't leave. Oh, well, because... <laughs> You know, the mountains around the Encanto are, are pretty tall. Discussing the Encanto's economics, Bush explained that, quote, the town is self-sufficient with no trade from the outside. 
With everything they need at their disposal, there is little reason for anyone to leave the Encanto. We swear to always help those around us and earn the miracle that somehow found us. The town keeps growing, the world keeps turning, but work and dedication will keep the miracle burning. If they did, though, could they return? Bush answered, quote, Yes, but finding it would be nearly impossible. This means that inhabitants don't have to worry about the conquerors who chased Alma and Pedro out of their old village. However, nearly impossible isn't the same as impossible. On Twitter, Bush noted that some of the animals that appear when Antonio gets his gift aren't from the coffee region. If wild animals can enter, people from the outside world should be able to visit as well. Of course they can come! <laughs> Of course, we suspect they'd have to be welcomed guests. I need blessed us with a refuge in which to live. A place of wonder. An encanto. An encanto. Number six, is the mountain range restored? As the family Madrigal and the community band together, the casita is rebuilt and the magic returns. When the magic went out, though, the mountain range surrounding the village cracked. Where's Mirabel? Where is she? Mirabel! Mirabel! Does that mean the mountains were restored along with the magic? No, but that's part of the ending's deeper meaning. Quote, they were closed in and protected, but they were also sort of closed off from their past, explained co-director and co-writer Sharice Castro-Smith. It was really intentional for the mountains to not completely close back up, because now they're able to see their past and interact with it in a healthy way without blocking it off. This also likely means that the village is now open to more outsiders in search of a miracle. Home sweet home, I like the new foundation. It isn't perfect. Neither are we. That's true. Number five, why doesn't Dolores' prophecy come true? It's a heavy lift with a gift so humbling. Always let the well in the family fumbling. Grappling with prophecies they couldn't understand. Do you understand? Dolores falls in love with Mariano from afar overhearing his poetry that he shows no one. Although he never noticed her, Dolores knows the real Mariano when she declares her feelings. To her delight, Mariano finally sees her. Dolores, I see you. And I hear you. Yes. Let's get married. Slow down. Some have argued that means Bruno's prophecy about Dolores didn't come true. Oye, Mariano's on his way. Bush pointed out on Twitter that Bruno was actually spot on. The man of Dolores' dreams was out of reach and betrothed to another. Bruno never said that Isabella and Mariano would get married or that Dolores would end up alone. If I see something that you don't like, you're gonna be all, Bruno makes bad things happen. Oh, he's creepy and his vision killed my goldfish. Quote, Dolores just jumped to the worst case scenario, Bush wrote. Mirabel notably plays a role in setting up Dolores and Mariano. Since Bruno's vision of Mirabel was foggy, perhaps Dolores' romantic future was also undecided. Number four, when do problems with gifts arise? You should have told me the second you saw the vision. Think of the family. I was thinking of my daughter. Peppa, calm down. I'm doing my best. Yes. You're lucky it's not a parakeet. Although almost every member of the family Madrigal receives a special power, their gifts can also bring external and internal crises. When exactly do these problems arise? What can you do when you know who you wanna be is perfect, but I'll still be okay and make it away. Does it happen shortly after someone gets their gift or at a certain point in life? Bush says that it occurs gradually. 
For example, shortly after Antonio gains the ability to talk to animals, Abuela notes that they'll find a way to put his gift to good use for the community. We are all thankful for Antonio's wonderful new gift. I told them to warm up your seat. Thank you, Toñito. I'm sure today we'll find a way to put your blessings to good use. Although Abuela has the best intentions, she inadvertently puts pressure on Antonio. Even with the strongest individuals like Luisa, pressure builds over time, and soon enough, the cracks begin to show. Under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can be of service. A floor crack, the straw in the stack, that breaks the camel's back, what breaks the camel's back? This demonstrates how easily a gift can start to feel like a curse. Luisa will never be strong enough. Isabella won't be perfect enough. Bruno left our family because you only saw the worst in him. Bruno didn't care about this family. He loves this family. Number three. Did Bruno argue with Abuela? It was your vision, Mirabel, not mine. You're afraid Abuela will see you. Yep, I mean, yes. That too. In the finished film, Bruno goes into hiding after having an uncertain vision about Mirabel. Bruno tells nobody what he saw until Mirabel confronts him years later. Like your future was undecided. But I knew how it was gonna look. I knew what everyone would think because I'm Bruno and everyone always assumes the worst, so... So... In a deleted scene, it's revealed that Bruno, or Oscar as he was originally called, got into an argument with Abuela before storming off. He said a bunch of stuff, Abuela got mad, and when Abuela got mad, the house got mad, and he was like, I'm out. And Abuela was like, if you leave this house, you're dead to me. Bush explained that they removed this plot point because, quote, it felt stronger character-wise that he wasn't ready to confront Abuela until he went to the river to defend Mirabel, when he thought she'd need his help the most. It was me! I was like, go! And she was like, <laughs> she only wanted to help. I don't care what you think of me. But if you're too stubborn to, to, to... In the same deleted scene, Felix says that Oscar's room rotted after he left. Bush clarified that Bruno's room wasn't always so decrepit. As he became more isolated, his room started reflecting that empty feeling inside. Number two. Does Mirabel remember Bruno? Don't know. But I heard the grown-ups once, before Dio Bruno left, he had, like, some terrible vision about it. Dio Bruno? Towards the film's beginning, Mirabel discusses every member of the family in great detail, except for Bruno. My Dio Bruno, we don't talk about Bruno. They say he saw the future, one day he disappeared. Mirabel's uncle was gone for 10 years, according to the filmmakers. It's actually me. I used to say my real gift was acting. <laughs> I'm Jorge. I made the spackle. How long have you been back here? Since Mirabel is 15, she had just turned five when Bruno left. Even before that, Bruno was distant from the family, and nobody talked about him after he left. We don't talk about Bruno, no. Thus, quote, Mirabel probably has tiny memories of Bruno, but nothing substantial, according to Bush. Camilo was the same age as Mirabel when Bruno went into hiding. Although Camilo acts as if he remembers his uncle well, his creepy description isn't entirely accurate. Bush clarified that, quote, Camilo didn't really know anything. He heard some rumors and embellished them, because that's Camilo. <laughs> Bruno does have a way with rats, however. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Do these kids have names? Yes, Alejandra, Pumped Guancho, and Cecilia. All nods to real-life individuals. What's this get? We're gonna find out. What's your gift? Who's asking? Us? Well, us. I can't just talk about myself. Why isn't Abuela's name on her door? Bush says, quote, It was probably Alma originally, but evolved to Abuela when she had grandchildren. Clean your rooms. I don't care how big they are. Do powers act up during slumber? 
Yes, we had that as a scene once, Bush wrote. How tall is Mirabel? 5'2. Surprisingly, Bush has gotten this question a lot. I never meant this to get autobiographical. Who's just to review the family? Who's this character? Bush named her Lily after Edna Liliana, an Afro-Colombian journalist who helped make Encanto possible. I was born in Colombia. My family is from the Pacific coast of Colombia. It's a region of majority of black population. And Colombia is the biggest country in the diaspora, Spanish-speaking. Spanish Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Do you need Madrigal blood to get a gift? Technically, Mirabel isn't the only Madrigal without supernatural power. Even after they married into the family, Agustin and Felix didn't get any special abilities. When me and your Theo Felix married into the family, mm -hmm. outsiders who had no gift mm -hmm. never ever would. Mm -hmm. Surrounded by the exceptional, it was easy to feel unceptional. During production, the filmmakers discussed whether the husbands should have gifts. Since Encanto is about family roles and expectations, they decided that only the children should receive gifts. I gave you the special since you're the only Madrigal kid with no gift. I call it the not special special since uh, you have no gift. Thanks. You don't need to be part of the Madrigal bloodline to have a power, however. Bush mentioned on Twitter that if a family member were to adopt a child, they wouldn't be deprived of a gift ceremony. After all, you don't need the same blood to be part of the same family. Likewise, Mirabel finds that just because she can't grow flowers or lift donkeys doesn't mean she's not a Madrigal. Now see yourself in time. You're the real gift, kid. Let us in. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.